Welcome to our Open Talk series. My name is Teresa Züger and I'm the research lead of the AI and Society Lab. I'm leading an interdisciplinary research group that wants to find out how AI can serve the public interest. And pretty early in our research, we understood that this is such a big and complex question that we cannot solve it completely by ourselves. So in this series of conversations, we speak to people who bring in their experiences and their research to find out the limits and the potential of AI to serve the public interest. And we really hope you enjoy these conversations. When I introduce myself to people that work in different spheres and have nothing to do with our kind of bubble, they're always like, oh, algorithms for the common good. It's like, what does that mean? But if you give them a concrete example, they're like, oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, that's a real problem. We need to solve that. And can algorithms really work? So this is why we think it's really important to, to understand from the details into the bigger picture. Um, but first, maybe to me, I work at the Bertelsmann Foundation since a year and a little bit. I come from background with econ and then I did public policy. So I uh, am not so strong on the tech side, but more on the question of how tech and society connects. And yes, I'm very happy to show you a little bit about our work. The kindergartens, or actually the distribution of childcare places, is a huge problem in Germany. Everybody knows somebody, especially in Berlin, that just went crazy about the question of how to find a childcare place. The question is, can algorithmic systems help make the distribution of daycare places more efficient? But more, I think even more interesting is more fair. If you think you have just a scarce amount of places, you can think about how you distribute them. It's so unbelievable, inefficient, how these uh, childcare places are distributed. We need to find a solution. First of all, very societal problem. It's really about people getting on, at a table. They, you really have to find criteria. And you, meet, you need to make them explicit. What are the criteria that make a child more relevant to getting a place? And once you have that criteria that not only counts for one kita, but for more kitas, like all of the surrounding kitas, then the next, the parents can just give in their preferences. And then the matching algorithm comes into play and sorts out the list in which, um, in which, yeah, uh, in which way they should give out their free places. And lastly, it's the question of how this actually can lead to more fairness. They really have to figure out a criteria catalog. And that means it's just more transparent. If all the kitas, the kindergartens use that same criteria, it's also more easy to check for parents, like why did I get a place or did not get a place? Mostly they will ask why did they not get a place? And it can be less discriminatory. If they change something in the hierarchy of which children get an acceptance, they will have to explain why. So you can make changes to the setup of how the algorithm kind of sorts out the priorities. And there can be good reasons, but you have to kind of explain that if you're in that set of room where you kind of uh, explain that to the other people. And that can also lead to less discrimination. How could you communicate and create trust in the algorithm if the decision criteria are set by machine learning and not actual human beings? Yeah, super interesting question, because I think this is kind of where what we do and society kind of popul populations attitudes toward what AI should or could do with society is kind of the interesting field, because what we learned is it's a lot more easy to communicate about this case because it's such a simple algorithmic system. There's no AI in it. I so some people really like to write, oh, this is KI because KI in kindergarten is such a nice like wording, but it's just wrong. There's no KI in it. And we always say that and sometimes we're hurt and sometimes we're not. Um, but I think from our experience, it's a lot easier to uh, get people more acquainted with the idea of using algorithmic system in this really like a fragile environment if it's understandable. And this is why we can always say it's not the algorithm, it's you and you decide what's happening. This makes a lot more communicatable. Did you evaluate if the algorithmic system is more efficient and fair? I, th uh, I think the answer is efficiency, it's yes, um, because it's kind of inherent to the algorithmic system itself. So they thought about efficiency from the econ side when they implemented it, and they had really concrete demands what the system has to do, and that was create more efficiency. But 
talking about fairness, always looking at what, what's the status quo right now. And the status quo is completely unfair. It's unfair on so many levels. If there's just a, a teeny tiny bit of more fairness, because you lower the bar of how complicated it is to actually apply for, that's just a really tiny kind of thing that you do in that system. But if that helps for people to actually get into that system easier, I think this is like, let's start there and see how else it kind of works. And maybe just the other part that's kind of the broader space, it's political, right? So if you'd set up criteria, it's a very political question of what are your preferences as a society? And there's of course a local societal question. And that's all about values. What are your values in saying, we want all the people that don't have like, who are poor in a sense that they get maybe, for example, had fear in that families, they should get a place no matter, no matter. This could be a political decision or a societal decision. I don't know how you can do that, in the, whether that's lawful, but you could say that this is our priority and all the other parents that work full time, but have like double income. Well, you will have to find a different way to find it. That's a political question that's about values. And this is where fairness is also decided. And I think that's where it gets really interesting because that's a societal question. And technology is really just one way of fixing one of the little kind of things but the questions itself, they're just very political and societal. Our open talks are open for collaboration. Contact us to get involved.